Hi. Hi, Deba. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I'm here with you here at your ice cream place and all of that. Interesting. Uh, funny enough, I've had a few friends that are very, very ice cream fan mm -hmm. and all of that. I guess my family too. You know, also they, like ice cream. Sundays when we host, we get a lot of uh, these things. But I'm not sweet tooth, so mm -hmm. I really don't do much of this. But I heard about your 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 business from a friend, mm -hmm. and I feel it's very interesting to uh, to yeah, know more about the business and okay. just to also share the challenges, the story, how you came about the business and all of that. So, Deba, how did you start? How, how do you, why ice cream? I mean, okay. I've done some other things. Yes. So, why so, ice cream? How did you start? Yeah, the plan was not of like growing up. If they asked me, what would you be in future? I wouldn't say, oh, ice I want to be an ice cream vendor. I want to be an ice cream vendor, like I call it. So, the plan was actually to just, you know, go through school, go into the finance sector and, you know, do things. You know, when they ask you, what do you want to be? I want to be the next TV and governor. <laughs> so, yes, I studied economics in school and um, school? University of Illorin. And um, so it was not like I didn't do well. I came out with a second class offer. So it's not like, oh, because I didn't get a job, I ventured into this. Um, I started working in the bank and... I really did not see myself doing that for How many so years did you do that? Three years. Okay. And um, I honestly didn't enjoy going to work, waking up every day going to work. Like, it was a struggle every day. And then I knew that there was something missing. So, honestly, I tried food business before, but it was more of food food. Like, the name of the business was Onja Express. So we used to sell Bali, Dun Dun. Um, um, abacha and all for delivery. I did the business with my cousin and lack of funds basically made the business close up before it even materialized. We didn't have a store. So we had, a store. Yeah. we had a store. We had a small store in Oniru then and we used to mm. do delivery. We had a bike. We had a bus for events. But I don't know. We got frustrated with um, the landlord's terms and conditions at the store. Then we moved back to the kitchen. And then it was just a whole lot of stress, delivery, like mm -hmm. having to make a la carte every day yeah, for delivery. Yeah. Then sometimes because you've stored something in the freezer and then you don't get the number of deliveries, it can stay longer. And then if you give the customer, the taste is already bad. And so wastages and all. I just knew, no, you know what? I can't do this. So this was during my NYSC. So immediately after NYSC, started applying for jobs, got into the bank. I knew I wanted to, do, to be in the food industry, but... I just felt, you know what, let me just go back to my former dream of going into the yeah. finance sector. And then there I was in the bank, sad. Obviously, you see me smiling every day. But um, something happened during COVID to a lot of people, and I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs, because I think COVID bettered a lot of businesses now. And I started food blogging because obviously I still love cooking. I still like to cook. So I started recording as someone that was almost jobless at the time, started recording um, my food recipes and all. So I was doing this ice cream recipe, an ice cream series where I was doing different flavors of ice cream. You know, then a lot of people were doing banana bread recipes during COVID, ice cream recipes. So I did this and then um, I invited my friends over for lunch one day. And after lunch, they had tasted the ice cream. And I just felt, oh, nice, nice. And then everybody keeps it moving. Then they started asking me to make for them to buy. And I'm like, okay. Then I called a ridiculous sum of money. And they said, then they are willing to pay for it. I said, are you sure? They said, yes. I said, because I'm not going to stress myself for free. So they, like three of them had ordered and then I made for them. And then I had leftovers and I took it to work. And then my colleagues really loved it and they paid for it. And then they requested for more. And then there was this request from my friends and my colleagues every time. So I saw myself making ice cream almost every day for delivery. So I would go to work with my cooler of ice cream. The cleaner then would take it and store it in the different units, in the freezers that you can find, and then start dispatching to people. And I was making money from ice cream while I was banking. So why did I leave? I didn't leave because I knew I was going to um, establish the bass creamery in like a huge way. I just left because I was actually frustrated. So yes, frustrated, out of job, 
I started to put more energy. Frustrated? How? Yeah. What do you mean by, by frustrated? frustrated? Like, you just it didn't was, enjoy what you were was, doing? It was a lot of work. I was in retail operations at the time. Mm. Retail operations in Nigeria is crazy because you are the, you are the, you are the, forf you are the forefront of the battle line. Yeah. Like, you are the ones customer interface. Yeah. And you know the way Nigerian banking is. There's always network issues. There's always complaints. There's always queue. Yeah. So, like, you're trying to attend to customers, mediate. Yeah. Make them see yeah. reasons why. It was a lot of pressure. It was a lot of pressure. And you weren't made for that. I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't, okay. I wasn't made for that. Yeah, <laughs> I prefer I mean, pressure just... in the food <laughs> <laughs> where I what I love doing than pressure yeah, in, in what another you... man's business. Like really yeah. it was a lot. Loading ATM, you know, bagging cash. Retail operations is not a small. Yeah. So anyway, I left because I was tired. Honestly, and I was frustrated. And you left? At the time you left banking. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, what was his plan? Uh, what I was, was already plan? doing you, this, but okay. I did not think the plan was to, you know, IT was a thing in 20, just after COVID, IT, IT was a thing. So the plan was okay. By the way, I have a master's in economics. So the plan was why would I just throw away my certificates and then face ice cream? Ice cream. So the plan was just to, okay, you know, while I'm doing the ice cream, it's just. It was the plan was for you to be a side also. Do you understand? Okay. While I'm doing this, I'm going to do, you know. So I did um, project management, professional. I did it twice before I passed. <laughs> but I did it, I passed. I did DevOps. And then, you know, I just, Amazon Web Service. And I thought I would, I don't know, probably get a job, an IT job, you know, earning the dollars. But I didn't quite fancy leaving ice cream fully. So I put my energy in ice cream. Started doing was it events. because of the, the feedbacks you were getting from the people yes. you were supplying? The or feedbacks. Just because and you it enjoyed. made me happy. Yeah, because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed going for events. So it was basically events and then daily deliveries. But I'd drawn back on the daily deliveries and then focused on events because events is bulk money and, you know. So it was basically event, and it still is events for me because I do not depend on my working customers. I do not like I've been in business, and I just opened the working store. How long so, have you been in business? in in business? Or, yeah, in the ice cream business. Um, three and a half. This is the we're going to the fourth year. Okay. So basically, it's and has it been in that three and a half? Uh, I mean, has it been from starting? Mm -hmm. You left banking to start this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was something that you wanted to do. Yeah. As a side business, and mm -hmm. and, and, and I and, ended and up. now, you so are, it has no. been an exciting journey yeah. with challenges, of course, <laughs> ups and downs. But I realized that in Nigeria, if you give quality, you yeah. offer quality, and you market, you get the customers. So, what was the reaction of your family leaving your job and all of that? Yeah, How was especially it? my like... mom. It was like. <laughs> She ice cream loafer machines. <laughs> Sorry, pardon my Yoruba. Yeah. And then she was, you know, indecisive, but she had known that she didn't want me to be in the bank mm. forever. So yeah, she just had to support on the side. Yeah, so but how did you raise capital to start? Okay, how did so you uh, did you start producing from your house? Yes. And before getting a space. So how I mean, how did so, you grow? Like my business, I train people and I tell them that you can start from zero because i started from zero and i'm here it's not like my salary at the bank was wow that i said okay i saved up while working no it wasn't that it was the money i got from ice cream that bettered this and i tell people i train on ice cream making i do events i do daily deliveries i supply hotels i supply supermarkets and basically the lump sum of everything will just make you realize that there is money in this thing. Nigerians are willing to spend money to get quality. But you starting ice cream business, mm -hmm. there are other people doing the business. Yeah. They, are, they are both foreign and local. Yes. I mean, we have a lot of foreign brands mm -hmm. and, and a bit of local brands. And how is it like for you knowing that you want to do this, uh, uh, you, you want to start producing yourself, in competition with already established brands and all of that. How, I mean, how did you figure that out in your head? So, I honestly thought it was impossible. Like, I thought there was a code or there was a secret to learn. 
and I went for trainings. I went for trainings in the UK, and I realized that, you know what, my ice cream, like my already established recipe, is better than all of these mixes, because a lot of people, a lot of existing businesses use pre-done pre or powder mix, right, to produce their ice cream. So I'm like, okay, why should I leave my recipe for these mixes? Why not develop and make people know that it's a thing to make ice cream from scratch, and I can be a small business making ice cream and be as good as or better than these people. So that was why I focused my energy on, you know what, develop your recipe, make it better. You don't have to cook. Um, compete or compare yourselves with these people. And yeah, I draw inspiration from the likes of Anz and Rene because they've been in business for quite a while, right? And they are doing absolutely well. But like I always tell people, I don't sell gelato, I sell ice cream. So yeah, not my competition, not my competition, but my inspiration, right? And then other ice cream companies in Lagos, honestly, don't stand close to me. I think I just don't have the name yet because I don't have branches, but my Instagram family, know me and they know my words so yeah so i really don't see competition right mm -hmm. but 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 of course there is there is there is always competition in every market yes. but in the nigerian market has it been uh uh, uh for you mm -hmm. i mean i mean nigeria starting a business in nigeria what are the hurdles you've had to face you know see before putting a business out there and deciding that you want to make this your major business mm -hmm. It's different from the real experience yeah. when you start, when you, enter when you enter into it, then you're facing the real demons, mm -hmm. like a lot, a, I mean, a lot of things. So can you share some, Shed light on the yeah, some of those shocks? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, entering into the business, basically, I had one major challenge from the beginning, which is still my challenge. We do not have locally produced milk sufficient enough for ice cream production. And that's one big deal. Like, <laughs> there was a time I was talking to my husband and I said, are you sure I won't start a cow, cow farm? And I went into deep research on that. And I realized that they even started it in Kwara State and it ended up not coming to fruition. The cows basically reduced production of milk the moment they hit Nigeria. First of all, Nigerian cows can't make the milk that we consume. Mm. I know that's a shocker. And yeah, yeah. it was a shocker to me as well when I was trying to do my research. Imported cows are the cows that make the milk that we consume and this. Nigerian cows can do milks like Bifura and Co, all those yogurts, right? And then we do not even have enough supply of this milk in Nigeria to produce the milk that the whole country can consume. So they import cows, right? And they produce the milk. Yes. And even milk producing companies like the big names import their milks because it's even better for them. They do not have cow farms. So it's even better for them to import from countries that have these cows that produce the milk that we consume. How come our own cows can produce the milk that we consume? Okay, so I, I really the quality know. is different. Is it genetics that has some Yeah, so the are... weather especially. Okay. Um, the studies that, sh the findings that um, Quara State had when they brought imported cows, they realized that, first of all, from maybe 100 liter per cow per day or whatever, it's reduced to from 50 to 50 from 50 to 30 because of the weather it's too hot for them it's or? too hot for them to produce then we put this in there <laughs> <laughs> i just kidding so i'm sure like they brought experts from south africa because they brought the cows in from south africa so i'm sure they tried a lot of things it's and then work. they invested millions in the project so i'm like okay who am i to say i want to start cow farming when Obviously, you know what would have put the whole state failed. State failed. I, 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 so, I like, mean, it's, yeah, and then I realized well, that. Well, we don't know yeah. because there's a lot of things that happens back end when it yeah. comes to uh, state and projects know, and politics. And, you know, technology also, yeah. you no, know, I think the governor actually wanted it to work. Okay. So, because it would have been a thing. And it was not the only one that tried. There are other private um, companies that have tried in the past and then it failed. So, that challenge is a major challenge that I cannot get what I need the most for my product locally. It's one major challenge. And then... So, milk too. The dollar has a lot to do. I mean... My brother. <laughs> yes. And as crazy as it sounds... Doing business in Nigeria. <laughs> it's tough. And then you would feel like sometimes you want to be the change. Like you want to be the one that does locally produce things. And But uh, it's difficult. For instance, I have a student, or I had a student that 
decided to do um, dairy-free ice cream. So I followed through with the projects with her. Yeah. Like we developed recipes with coconut milk, cashew nut milk, and all of that. But the truth mm -hmm. is, I cannot sell all dairy-free ice cream. The population that wants dairy-free is too little compared to the population that don't want dairy-free. So what will I do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK. Then, uh, I mean, how about overhead costs, all of those a lot. things? So, know. obviously, Are you running on generator now? Yes, currently we're running on generator. Diesel is evaporating. So, yes, yeah. electricity. Um, because you, you need a lot of power to keep this. Yes, high. it has to be. You have to have electricity almost 24 hours. If it's going to be off in the whole day, maybe one hour max. What's like your diesel cost per day? Per day. Okay, so because my area is not, it's a good area. So let's just say 100. 100 we have light. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot but of the, light. So, yes. I mean, plus plus the grid and yes. all of that. Yes. So your power cost. Power cost. Alone and all that. Yes. yes, in a month, in fact. But, yeah, I think that's not even the only cost. There are a lot of other unforeseen expenses in Nigeria regulations that you never knew existed until you got into the business and then you're like, hey, okay, for, to put my signage out there, you have to pay for every single sign details you have. Every letter. Every letter, every, the one on the building is different from the one on the glass, the one on the road is different, like that one, and then tax, and it's just like different things that you hear every day, and then you're like, okay, when did this one come up? So, so you started this business for like, Close to four years now. Yeah. Has there been any time that you're like, ah, this is this is not what I bargained for. Yeah, uh, I so mean, those times where those moments. How, I mean, how did you get out of it? So towards the end of this project, I had that because the debit alert never stopped. <laughs> the debit know. was more than the credit. No, it's, it's always more than the credit. <laughs> but just pray for a major credit to... Yeah, to, to be able to buy... No, no, no. On my expense group, there was a day I said, you know what, I'm done. I signed out of the group. Mm. I'm like, I cannot... Mm. I cannot... How will I put it? Phantom out other businesses that do not even sell as much as we sell. I, I don't understand how they, how, they, how they survive. Like, yeah. it's crazy. But, you know what, it's Nigeria. We're built for this. We have tough skin. Yeah. We have coconut head. Yeah. So... We can't give up, and that's the truth. But like sometimes, even when you want to be like downcast, you just think of the staffs that are depending on you for their. Do you belong to family. any entrepreneurship society? Maybe some. I mean, that, that kind of encourage, encourage you. you. Okay, you know, so I currently, have, no, no, no. I just have close entrepreneur friends. Um, Gourmet Twist, she's one person. So it's not like a society. It's just like um, factions of people, different businesses that I draw inspiration and energy from like i have this close friend in the business she's also in the confectionery business or she does banana bread and she's always there for me like okay i'm going through this challenge and she has been in the business just a little longer than i have so like i could ask her like what did you do in this situation or just sometimes they say oh, well, you're on your own i don't know the solution to you how do you customer. deal with customers feedback you know okay. in nigeria mm -hmm. i mean i think anywhere in the world uh businesses and customers is always most especially in this age of social media yeah. where you've done a lot to build your brand mm -hmm. and just you can't be here every day yeah. you're not the one serving the ice cream you're not the one you know let's say you're on a break and all of that and then somebody comes here and then somebody you know behave badly and all of that and then somebody just decides to you know just go online and or maybe maybe just a you know mistake that a customer wants to how do you deal with customers feedback all those because in the food business is very very delicate okay yeah. so obviously sometimes they say medicine after death you have to avoid bad service so i do a pre dealing with my staffs on how to attend to customers how to talk to customers but there are sometimes that there are situations above their yeah. capacity or like this was an unavoidable mistake I, I don't know, solicit with customers, give them some extra sometimes, appease and say, you know what, we promise that this won't happen again. So sometimes I usually want to take up that situation myself because I feel like if you hear that this is deeper. Hmm? Yeah, you know that. Yes. 
and I have accepted that I made him. There was a time, like my staff had made a horrible mistake and it was our fault. And I was trying to, so the next meeting we had, we have a weekly meeting, everybody, and I had to tell them that this is what the customer said, that she was disappointed. You came late for the event. You did not even call to communicate your challenge on the road, even if you said VIO caught you, right? Your truck. You did not communicate your challenge with her. You got late for the event and then she was not pleased. Then I just told her, it is all my fault. I take full responsibilities. We are sorry. We would love to make it up to you in any way possible. Please send your address for delivery. I would like to deliver you a box of three and everything. So I told them that this is leadership. Um, is my name out there? Is my brand? Is my face? Do you understand? If you make a mistake, I pay for it. Okay? Yeah. But, yeah. Let's see some other part of your space. Okay. Let's see, let's okay. see some other part okay. of it. So I like this, by the way. I mean, okay. it's easy. Is it interactive? Um, with the remote, yes, but not touch screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we play videos of our menus sometimes, okay. if you want to see. Okay. Nice. So, and these are... Table. Pop, these are Come change the... These are... Popsicles, popsicles yeah. yes. This is mango. Yes, this is mango. Yeah. They are still producing a couple of more flavors for today. What's the... What, what's the... Brownie fudge. Oh. Okay. This lotus cream. You should taste the mango. It's amazing. It's my new favorite flavor. Ah. Yeah. Maybe I'll go with one of them. Okay. Yeah. I know my daughter loves uh, this thing. So this is where they... Yeah. So you they brought all these things in? Yes. You... Yeah. <laughs> for excellence, honestly. <laughs> in as much yeah. as we try to do pro-Nigeria, for excellence, sometimes yeah. you just have to... <laughs> import. <laughs> Nice, crazy. nice, I, nice, I, nice. I, I, so I, this is so people can come here, yeah. sit down, and so have this is ice a customization else. spot, right? We uh, make ice cream a la carte with nitrogen. So there's the nitrogen tank. You could, if you want to see it, you want to go in? No, it's fine. Okay, you so yeah. so you can get yeah. your base with any topping of your choice. And there are sauces in there. All by yourself? Yeah. You no, no, no. You, you okay, direct okay, okay. like Tell a buffet, them. but some. What does the like nitrogen it? do? It mm. freezes it on contact. Oh, okay. In like five okay. minutes. Okay. Sorry, I'm. Um, I don't really know about. <laughs> yes. No. So you like get the same frozen ice cream. Yes. But you customize the flavor yourself. So and I think that. Instantly that's, freezes. Yeah. So I think this is my unique selling point. Like this is what nobody has it in Lagos, right? So you yeah, instantly freeze it. So you can make any flavor. You can make an alcohol based mm. flavor. You saw this somewhere or in based Miami, on research? In Miami. Oh, you saw this in Miami? Yeah, Florida. I decided to, you know. Yeah, get my own thing done. Even uh -huh. though I, I fabricated the whole thing myself because yeah. buying the machine yes. is $5,000 so, per one cent. So you got it locally fabricated? Yes, yeah, so I got this. And it looks and, nice. Yeah, so you just imported little fragments and yeah. yeah. They coupled it together for me here. Nice. Nice, nice. <laughs> what, what, did you design the space yourself or yes. you got an interior person? So I designed the space yeah. myself because my dad is into the architectural thing. Oh, okay. And he died in July last year. Ah. So I had to complete a lot of his projects. So I just got to if I can continue and complete his projects, why not do my thing myself? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. did it myself. Yeah. Yeah. Challenge, you know. I think that was why I was almost losing it at some point. So, did you use the, the ground floor as well? Or that's... No, so the ground floor is for another business entirely. Okay. They are trying to move in, so they are trying okay. to. Okay. So, something. then you have your factory somewhere there yeah, so where they at produce the bar and all and of that. The store, and then your office. My office and staff sitting area. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, do you still train? Yes, but online, which I find better than the physical training. So, we used to use the space as the training space before we converted it into the working store mm -hmm. and when i converted it i knew that nobody can come in here to train again because my mm -hmm. production space had reduced okay. and i can't accommodate 12 you, students okay do you anymore. do you open on sundays yes because businesses like this you open monday to sunday sundays yeah every so you're running shift every day yes yeah, so there are um two or three people per shift and morning shift runs from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Afternoon shift runs from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. How many staff do you have? Um, a total of 26 now. 26. And you're still growing. Yes. So, so we have a lot of contract staffs. I know my contract staff are up to 20, because, but they are, I don't consider my, my full time staff because they are yes. just for events. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you do more of events. Yes. Not, not too much of walk-ins. Oh, so, you know, we just opened the walk-in store. So, yes, I'm hoping to do a lot more of walk-ins. But, yeah, more of events, more of bulk orders, more of deliveries, yeah. So, how do we make 
uh, how do people make orders? Do you have like a website? Do you have so, or just um, on Instagram? Instagram, WhatsApp, basically for now. We're working okay. on our website. Since we have a working store, we should have a website that matches our. So, new. how did you raise money for this? Was it from the events that you do? Yes, events and, and training. So no I, family and friends support. No family and friends support. And I had told myself while I was about to start the project, I'm like, I want to say the best cream we did that herself. And even when I go for trainings, um, I tell my husband not to pay for my tickets. The business has to pay for it. I'm doing it for the business, right? So it just makes me want to work more and, you know, try harder because yeah. I don't want to fail and I don't want people to say, oh, she left the bank for ice cream and now look at her now. So, yeah, right now, I feel like I'm at a point where people are saying, oh, she did a good thing there. And, like, I think she took a wise decision leaving the bank. So what made you decide, yes, you need a working now, from online to working? Customer pressure. <laughs> oh, that we need a working, we just like, need a... So, you know, ice cream is a thing you want to see physically. Like, I want that flavor, I want this flavor. But Deba Ice Cream was trying to pa persuade people to take ice cream online, like, order yeah. and let us deliver. But people are very, very, I don't know, they don't want change. They don't want to know. I know I want well, to walk in and buy my ice cream. Let me walk in and It will come in with my hotel. It will come. I be convinced. Like, Deva Ice Cream is all about convincing people that your ice cream will get to you no, frozen. No, no, but on a serious note, I would like to walk in and buy my ice cream. Yeah, Rather than does. buying online, online and all that. And get to, yeah. I, I can buy so many things online, but not my ice cream. Yeah, exactly. My ice cream, I want to pick. I want exactly. to, you know, have a taste of this and then decide exactly what it is. Exactly what I want. Exactly. And I, and I guess it's one good decision that you yes, made. Yes, it was because to, it was a struggle yeah. trying to convince everybody to yeah. buy online. Yeah. And then I just said, you know what, let's just do it. Let's just do it. Since we have the space in a very good location. So, so you know Deba Screamy, how how big do you intend to take this? How big? Are you at some point going to look for investors? Because that's one thing about Nigerian entrepreneurs and all of that. Yes, we want to grow. Yes, we want to scale. And, but you know, some take it to a level and that's just it. And they're just, you know, and, and they just, and they're just complacent at the particular level. It doesn't grow. And that's what happens. And that's what makes when international companies come in, they take it way bigger than what is already yeah. existing you know, and all of that. Yeah. And they knock a lot of businesses out. So um, how big are you taking So this? I obviously um, want the Baskrim to go ahead of me to be bigger than me. As a person, because yeah, it's the best primary, but I don't want it to be my thing. Do you understand? I am currently like working on Navdak for Nigeria first, so I can deliver nationwide first of all, and then Africa, because currently I am involved in other African countries when it comes to training. I train students from Cameroon, um, Trinidad and Tobago, Ghana, you name it. So I realized that there is need for ice cream or my type of ice cream or my style of ice cream in this country. So I, yeah, I plan to go beyond Nigeria. And I, I obviously will not do that with our daily 2K conversion. Yeah, I would need investors. So when I was trying to do this, I plan to move, like I didn't plan to renovate this space. I plan to get a big space on Admiralty and I needed investors for that. So when I had approached them, they were interested. They loved our numbers on books. Like you don't have a working store yet and you have actually yeah, making these numbers. numbers. But I took a pause at that point because I said, you know what, let me Pressure. prove to myself yeah. that I can do this. Let me see what the bass screaming can do on our own. And then we can go to investors afterwards with our bigger picture, with our dream. And then they won't be scared because they have seen you do it. So yes, basically. So you've not raised for this at all? At all. We've just been Recycling and conversion. Oh, when you're going to raise, you're going to call me. Of course, definitely. Please do call me. <laughs> I will. Uh, We've I had like offers. We've had offers. We've had a lot of offers. But I think I just wanted to see what we can do for ourselves first. But like, I'm actually exhausted now. I think I just want to sit back and enjoy. Because when you keep um, plowing back profits, you are not relaxed as a CEO. I need my money. I need money to work for me now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, is that point you have? I think you've done startup, mm -hmm. you've done growth, yeah. 
you are in your growth phase yeah. now yeah. and you're still yeah. you're still in your growth phase so it's still growing yeah. but 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 you're not in that point of scale yet no, and point. and if you have to scale which is quantum you have to depend on yeah. funds that are, are, are investor funds and all of that because scale and stability and sustainability and all of that that's taking the business way beyond yeah. your uh, way beyond you now and all of that, you know, making it bigger than what it is. And, and I already see the passion you have for this and how this can become, and how this can become uh, way bigger than what it is and all of that. I don't want to take us into your factory. I really don't want to take anybody into it. That's your, that's your secret corner, you know. And, but, but at some point, we'll still do a documentary about this business, how you produce, because I would love to see now you, you know how it's produced and all of that because i want to produce my own ice cream at home and all of that and then i host a lot of friends during the weekend and i guess i'll give you a call one of these days and to just be us making ice cream and all of that and and and, 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 and i don't consume much but i have three girls and, and my wife is a lover of uh, ice cream as well so you have a steady customer now uh, you know but 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 well done and thank you for doing this because Running a business in Nigeria is not is not child's play. Uh, I know the headache. I know the mm -hmm. I know the frustration sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know when you're talking about uh, there are a lot of things that you don't even know exist, mm -hmm. and you just meet them along the way, that. you know, and, and all of that. But how do you how do you relax amidst all of this building a business? You have kids. I'm yeah, I, I'm sure kids. you have. Yeah. yeah. So. I'll you know, relax. balancing family, you know, all relax. of that. I can't relax in Nigeria. I run. But <laughs> me running is still also me trying to get more knowledge for my business. But it's relaxing. Like, when I go for trainings, when I go for ice cream conventions, and all of that. Like, trying to gain more knowledge to make this better. Because, like I said, I do not see competition. There is competition, but I do not see competition except where I was before. There's a saying that goes that your, the only competition you have is Yourself. the person you were before. Yeah. yeah, so I always get out of Nigeria to relax and, you know, clear my head. But what advice will you give to people in Korea now who are thinking of making that? Because there are a lot of people in the, in, within the workspace who, I mean, who is just endurance mm -hmm. journey. They are on that endurance journey. They have different ideas in their head, mm -hmm. but they are just in that fear zone what if it doesn't work what if it, for you did you have some kind of buffer like if this doesn't work i can fall back on this mm -hmm. maybe your husband is a very rich man mm -hmm. and i don't know you also oh well if it doesn't but work obviously if you have a husband, husband you have support money. you have yeah, support that. yes you have support but i think all. i did not put i did not place my mind on having a husband's support because if it was not there i'll still be following my passions in that ways but my advice to people that want to leave corporate, be sure you have, because entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Like yeah. I said, if you don't have a passion for it, you will definitely fall along the way. But passion and the courage. Because when we talk about passion, passion is not enough. Because passion can really get frustrating. Yeah. But the courage, because you can be passionate about something and you are in that, and you are just weak. Mm -hmm. But that courage to, to you know, yeah, to move and to but keep moving. But you know, moving. some people can yeah. have the courage and not have the passion, but they are just yeah. fearless, and then you are yeah, fearless, yeah, yeah. and then you have trash at the end of the day because yeah, yeah, you yeah. just even started yeah. the business. Because Everything mixed, yeah. So yeah, you have to have a combination of everything. And hard work cannot be overemphasized because there are times that you'll be tired. You work more than you're working in your 9 to 5, actually. Yes, definitely, more yeah. than. And you work more than your staffs because you have an HR, you still have to do your HR's job. You have an accountant, you still have to do your accountant's job. You have everything stops production. on your table. Everything starts. Yeah. And stops with Certain, me. Yeah. It starts, they might just help you. Then you'll be like, why? Let me just do my thing. Like, it's just better to do it. Yeah. So, yes, but there are times where you just have to let go. And then, because you do not want to be the alpha and omega of your business. Like, I always yeah. tell people. So, yeah, there are times you just have to, you know, delegate and hope that what yeah. you have taught them for. They will be able to because, catch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So, that person wanting to leave, you know, nine to five nine and to all five. that. You think yes, I think. Maybe, if you actually yeah. have something that you really love to do and you think you are good at it, because there are times where I tell people that, how did this person end up doing this thing? Like, don't they have family members? Like, people that go to 
project fame or the voice to sing and they are singing horribly <laughs> and then you say okay don't you have family members to advise you that yeah, you cannot yeah, sing yeah. so there are things that you do as a person mm -hmm. that people will say oh you actually there's something actually going on yeah. there do you understand yeah. oh you're a motivational speaker oh yeah you actually talk to me you actually make me feel better when you advise me people give you those indications they give you of those what indications. you should be doing yes not okay. that you just sit down because there's people that just sit down and say oh what can i sell oh ah this person is selling a let me start selling no i won't advise you to leave your business because what you are seeing someone else. people give you those indicators and you just know where to do business because you can be good at something mm -hmm. and you can support other people that are doing it mm -hmm. but and you can be good at something and it'll be good for you to you know start something mm -hmm. and all of that mm -hmm. you know like you said not everybody's wired to be an entrepreneur yeah. it's a different journey entirely yeah. It's, it's, and it's not child's play. I tell a lot of entrepreneurs, it's definitely not child's play. I've been in business all my life. I've never done nine to five. But, but I started business when I was 17. And, all, and it's been, I mean, it's been a lot of, you know, you know, I have a bit of experience in that. But it's not, not a lot of people believe that. You know, they just have this idea in their head and then they just want to start. Some are in that position of inertia. Yeah. They don't, they, they can't move. And they just need some kind of, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I realized is not every entrepreneurship journey involves buying and selling. There are some mm. that involves you rendering your own service. If you are in that particular... Yeah, is that product or service? Yeah, is that product? Sure. So if it is a service thing, I feel like just go for it. Just go for it. But if it's a product thing in Nigeria, hmm, calm down. If you're not an entrepreneurship, like an entrepreneur, like you said, or you don't have that flair for entrepreneurship, but you just know that you want to do this thing, I think you should get people that have been in the business to put you through. Because me, I won't say, oh, do A. A doesn't work for everybody, right? Yeah. But if you have like business consultants around you that you could talk to about doing that particular business, they could put you through, get the numbers rolling and... You know, you would know if it is the right business for you to leave your nine to five because you don't even know how much that nine to five is paying. Because entrepreneurship is not peace of mind. Some nine to fives are peace of mind. <laughs> I don't know the nine to five you want to leave with, but I'm saying get your facts right before leaving. So yes, it's good to follow your passion, yeah. but it's not for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I really get that. And have you been able to brand your business? I, I know Deba is your name. Yeah, so Deba is my name. Is, but, but so it was, it was Deba's, because my blog then was Deba's Luxury Kitchen. Mm. So it became Deba's Luxury Ice Cream. Yeah. But then I had to rebrand and say, it's Deba. a creamery, you know. Yeah. So let's just stick to creamery. Okay, well done, well done, well done, Deba. It's Thank been you. nice talking to you. Same here. And well done for doing this. You're the first uh, female I'm, I'm interviewing. <laughs> and I hope to still do many more. Yes, I'm, li I'm really looking for female... There are lots of female entrepreneurs to, to, doing big to, things in Nigeria. I, I really want to hear about their story. I have a lot of uh, male entrepreneurs that are or, uh, that are already mm -hmm. in the in calendar, the... but I really don't have a lot of female entrepreneurs. Yeah, and all I have of that. plenty to. Yeah, yeah, to please. They are really please, doing please, well. Please, please, please. I yeah. would really love to to, uh, to talk to some of them, you know, uh, and all of that. So thank you very much for doing this, for thank believing you in your idea, yeah. for believing in your passion, and for turning it into this. This is. This is how we take this country to the next level. Yes. Entrepreneurs are those building this country. I say it anytime, any day. You're right. There is no... We are the most believers of this country called yes. Nigeria. Because yeah. we're here Because doing we are business. investing our money, yeah. our energy, our time. Yes, you're investing yeah. everything. Everything. And you're paying people's bills as yes. well. Yes. You know, yes. creating, creating value. Yes. Not Making, because we don't have options. Yeah, not because you don't have options. Yes, yeah. Because I had you know, a lot yeah. of options to mm -hmm. jump up, but yeah. I said, you know mm -hmm. what? Yeah. Here. Making things happen. Yeah. You know, we are the ones that uh, we are the ones that is that is in the forefront of this yes. economic development yes. and all of that. So yeah. I say a very big thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Can thank I help you for you? doing this? Yeah. Doing business in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right now. Okay, Take you. care. Bye. Yeah, <laughs>